Okay class, today we're in section 6.5 and in particular 6.5 extension. Use piecewise functions. The key vocabulary, piecewise functions, and step function. Your goal, graph and write piecewise functions. A piecewise function is defined by at least two equations, each of which applies to a different part of the function's domain. An example is given below. y equals x plus 1 if x is less than 0. y equals 2x minus 1 if x is greater than or equal to 0. The expression x plus 1 gives the values of y when x is less than 0. The expression 2x minus 1 gives the value of y when x is greater than or equal to zero. Okay, now here in example one, we're going to graph a piecewise function. Graph the function y equals negative x minus one if x is less than or equal to a negative one, y equals three if negative one is less than x and x is less than two. Other way to read that is x is greater than negative one and x is less than 2, and also graph the function 2x minus 5 if x is greater than or equal to 2. As you can see, to complete these problems easily, you must know how to graph rapidly in every situation. Step 1. To the left of x equals negative 1, graph y equals negative x minus 1. Use a closed dot at negative 1, 0 because the equation applies when x is equal to a negative 1. So in other words, what they're saying is when you look at this graph right here, when you look at this equation, you've got a negative x minus 1, and your slope is a negative 1. Your y-intercept is also a negative 1. So when you go to graph this, you have to realize that here they're saying if x is less than negative 1, that means, see this line right here? This line is actually going all the way down here, but the only part they're worrying about is where x is a negative 1 and less. So negative 1 is here, less goes back this way. Negative 1 is here, and less goes back this way. But the actual graph would have been your, uh, your y-intercept is a negative 1, so that means you were down here, and your slope was a negative 1. So that means you had to go up 1 over 1, up 1 over 1. Now remember that even though the slope, slope is a negative 1, we realize that a negative 1 can be written like this, or it could be written like that. So I'm using the latter. I'm going up 1 over 1, up 1 positive over 1 negative. But the function doesn't start until I get to x is less than or equal to a negative 1. Here, I'm graphing y is equal to 3. So what I do is I go up here, 1, 2, 3. Now y is equal to 3 is this entire line going this way. That's the whole line. But the only part they care about in the piecewise function is if x is greater than a negative 1 and x is less than 2. So x greater than negative 1, that's going this way, and x is less than 2, that's going that way. And then the same thing applies when I get here. I get y is equal to 2x minus 5 if x is greater than or equal to 2. So now that means I have to graph 2x minus 5. 2x minus 5 means my y-intercept starts down here at 5. And my line will end up going this way using a slope of 2 or 2 over 1. Okay? But once again, what region are we concerned about? We're only concerned about when x is greater than 2. There's 2. x is greater than 2. That means we're going this way. So everything up this way counts. So once again, a piecewise function is only taking a portion of whatever the domain is controlling. Example 2. Write a piecewise function. Write a piecewise function for the graph. Solution. All right, here's our graph. You can see we have two lines on the graph. Solution, for x is less than 
or equal to a negative 1, the graph is the line given by y equals x plus 3. For x is greater than a negative 1, the graph is the line given by y equals a negative x minus 3. So a piecewise function for the graph is as follows. y equals x plus 3 if x is less than or equal to a negative 1 and y equals a negative x minus 3 if x is greater than a negative 1. Okay, now to help you understand this better, what you are supposed to do is to take a look at this graph and you realize that the graph is going back in this direction. And the last point you see there, or the beginning point, depending on how you want to look at it, is you see a negative 1. X is a negative 1. That's the domain. That's controlling everything. And you see it's going back in this direction. And you see here it's shaded. So that means that x is less than or equal to a negative 1. Now, how do we get the equation? We got the equation, but we're going to look at the line and analyze it. So as we analyze the line, we realize the line is going back out this way. All right? And I'm looking at this, and I can tell that my y-intercept is going to be 3. All right? So my y-intercept is 3, and my slope is going to be down 1, negative, over 1, negative. Down 1, negative over 1 negative. Well, a negative 1 divided by a negative 1 is a positive 1. So my function is going to be y is equal to x plus 3, positive 1. Now let's take a look at the next line. Here, I'm still at negative 1, but I'm going in a greater than direction. I'm going in a greater than direction for x. So therefore, and it's not shaded. You can see here it's not shaded. So therefore, x is going to be greater than a negative 1. My y-intercept is easier to tell here because it's a negative 3. All right, and then my slope, I had to go up 1, over 1. Up, that's positive. Over, that's negative. So my slope will end up being a negative 1. If I went down, down 1, that's negative. Over 1, that's positive. So once again, I'm still at a negative 1 for my slope. Example, example 3. Solve a real-world problem. Parking. A parking garage charges $5 for each hour or fraction of an hour up to four hours per day. Make a table of values. Then write the cost C in dollars as a piecewise function of the time T in hours. Parked and graph the function. What is the cost of parking for two hours and nine minutes. Solution. You make a table. Time is in hours. Cost is in dollars. If the time is greater than zero and less than or equal to one hour, five dollars. If the time is greater than one hour but less than or equal to two hours, ten dollars. If the time is greater than two hours but less than or equal to three hours, the cost is fifteen dollars. And if the time is greater than three hours, but less than or equal to four hours, the cost is $20. Okay, now your function rule. Your function rule will be based off the table. So when t is greater than or equal to zero and t is less than or equal to one, we have five. When t is greater than or equal to one and t is less than or equal to two, 10. When t is greater than two, and less than or equal to 3, 15. And when t is greater than 3 and less than or equal to 4, we have 20. Now we're going to use these values to help us make this graph. Now when we graph, t is your domain. That's your x. Here, 5, 10, 15, and 20, that is what y is equal to. So you're basically saying y is equal to 5 y is equal to 10, y is equal to 15, and y is equal to 20. Now that is what you're going to graph. But you're going to graph that using these domains to control how far your lines are on your graph. Okay, so the first thing we're going to graph is y is equal to 5. That would be this whole line right here. That would be the entire line. But our domain says 
we only include when t is greater than 0 and when t is less than or equal to 1. So t is greater than 0. That goes that way. And t is less than or equal to 1. So here, the 1 is shaded. And here, the 0 is not. Our next graph is y is equal to 10. That's this line right here. What's control on that? t is less than 1 and t is less than or equal to a negative 2. Less than 1. Excuse me, t is greater than 1. That should be t is greater than 1. That goes this way. And t is less than or equal to a negative uh, to 2. That is going back that way. All right, next we got y is equal to 15. There's 15. That would be the entire line. But what's controlling it? t is greater than 2. And t is less than or equal to 3. So t greater than 2. That's going that way. It's going out that way. And t is less than or equal to 3. 3 is shaded. And it's going back this way. Next, y is equal to 20. So that would be the entire line right there. But what is the only region we're concerned about? t is greater than 3. And t is less than or equal to 4. Greater than 3, circle, but not shaded. It's going this way. Less than or equal to 4, 4 is shaded. And it goes back this way. Okay, now, because 2 hours and 9 minutes is between 2 and 3 hours, the cost is $15. Step functions. The function in example 3 is called a step function because its graph resembles a set of stairs. A step function is a piecewise function that is defined by a constant value over each part of its domain. You are now ready to begin your lesson. Since there are only nine problems, we are going to do all nine problems. Thank you.